Derek, we can start no place other than the punditry role. I yeah. mean, you've obviously had your team commented on from another year, a couple of years now, yeah. and then you've gone into it with Don Logan. I suppose there was talk of justifying the sweep, the sweeper assistant yeah. and all that. I mean, first of all, I just don't think you even need to justify it. It's yeah. out there. You've played some great stuff. I know obviously 2018 didn't go right, but yeah. I mean, why the need to, to justify it? Well, there's two things there, I suppose. Um, I think, well, well, after the show, I'll go back, go back to the show itself. Right? Yeah. After the show, I went to, um, I got straight on a plane at four o'clock in the morning, you know, and I, have, I had a feeling that initially, like, it was actually a feeling of liberation, right? I was saying mm. to myself, geez, I feel a bit liberated with this, but about 20 minutes in then, I kind of said to me, oh no, oh no, <laughs> you know, I said, hey, a bit of lingering hurt, I suppose. I won't call it bitterness, even though it was kind of, I almost kind of conveyed it in a bitter fashion. A lingering hurt from, I suppose, that I would have felt kind of inaccurate kind of criticisms, if you like, of over the years. Of the, yeah, yeah, in the past. Yeah. I was kind of saying that, that that kind of dominated my train of thought when I, when I went to speak about it, you know, and it built up in me all day, if I'm honest. You know, I was kind of saying to myself, it nearly built up in me all day and then it kind of came out. So I'd accept that that lingering hurt, I'd accept, A, it wasn't a platform for it, even though the message, largely in terms of the principles, I still stand over, but I accept it wasn't a platform for it or it wasn't the kind of, the night for it, if you like, in terms mm. of what was after happening, a brilliant game that day. So in terms of the, the question, the need to justify it, I just felt sometimes it's too easy to kind of say that teams are not tactically flexible, you know? And I suppose I would consider that the language has changed slightly in terms of the last year and a half, but that's nearly too late for me, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the language has kind of changed where people kind of say, geez, hang on, there's something in this now, there's something in this, you know? And genuinely, and being completely honest about it, I would have said that there was days where we, where we actually just told Ty not to follow, you know, just don't mm. follow. And you play with a kind of a six at the back, but Ty wouldn't follow, we might bring out an extra midfielder out around the area there. And then it'd be all sweep or debate, you know, and we wouldn't have had to actually play it, you know. So Matthew you know, Kenny said something similar this yeah. year after the league semi final yeah. against Limerick as well. Yeah, yeah so fully, and, but maybe just because I'm a bit of a hurling nerd myself, I think I know where you're coming from anyway. Yeah. And I just felt like, do you know what, just analyse what's happening there because yeah. I don't think you need to. Like, yeah. you, you've done enough in the game that you don't need to justify yourself. Yeah, and look, maybe that insecurity from not kind of. You know, you're a year out of it, like, and you're kind of just watching everything for a year. And I, the first year is always going to be difficult in terms of any role. And I've said to myself, Jesus, do I need to say it? The, the anorak in me is kind of mm. saying to myself, Jesus, this is actually happened. But I think I just, as I said, the lingering hurt got to it. The, the maddening part of it actually was, on reflection, was, was more to do with the college issue in that, um, as is your job, like, before, before that weekend happened, we'd say the semi finals. I was at home and I was going through the Limerick team and I was saying, Nicky Quaid, Julie IT, now he's doing the Hibernia course, Sean Finn, UL. Then I went through the 15 and I said, Jesus, they've all gone through third level, you know? And then I went through the Watford team at 17 and I said, Jesus, every one of the boys that started in that day went through third level. And then I started adding up the numbers and I was saying to myself, Jesus, I wonder how much that's changed since 20 years ago. And I wasn't saying for a second or I didn't want to articulate the point that there's no room for a farmer or a mechanic or a guy that's on shift work. But I was basically making the point that it has changed. You know, and in terms of, now whether it's the right thing for the boys to go to college and say to themselves, we can recover on the Monday, I'll have the Fitzgibbon, I'll have this particular pack, but I'd say it's gone from 35% 20 years ago to 90%. And it's even a reflection of, of and the reason I was mad over, over, you know, you have to go to college to play hurling, I wasn't saying that. I'm deeply invested in the Leave and Start Deploy program in my own school, which is the program for guys that want to go to apprenticeships, that want to go to PLC courses, that want to have special needs educationally, that want to go a different path than the, the, than the college path. So I think I was mad over, over, over how I articulated that point myself as well. So look, that, that's, you learn from it, you know? Mm. And do, do, like it came across afterwards, or some people would put two and two together, that you and Don Logue have been waiting for your chance to do this as a collective thing because he's into his tactics too. No, 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 even though, yeah, that, that's, and again, looking back on it then, you kind of say to yourself, I can see how people would say that. Yeah. You know, I can see how people would say that, but it's, it goes back to the argument, Shane. It's, it's, there's no them and us, like in Hurling, you know what I mean? Mm. You know, this traditionalist attitude as against a revisionist. And, you, you know, if you were to categorise me in a clone, you say, oh, he's a revisionist, he's, a, he's into innovation, he's into change. Jeez, I, I'm 20 years teaching in Dele Salaam every day after school, and we're just hurling with no instruction or no, you know, we're just hurling, like, you know, we're loving hurling. Mm. And I think that's, that's been Davy's argument. But I think, 
there's been a, a slight crossover now in terms of the language of pundits, in terms of things changing, a realisation that planning is hugely important in hurling. Mm. And also the traditional principles of mm. being manly, going for the ball, who you represent, you know, your attitude and all those things that are, that are you know, prerequisites, I suppose, of any particular performance. So that's, that for me, that gets lost sometimes. I think it's too easy to go with, today it was about attitude, today it was about aggression, today it was about... I think it's about more, and it's about the fusion of those two things, and, you know? And, and that's why after the, the Wexford against Tipperary game, and especially what you know about the tactics and all that, being very good at explaining, I was like, well, the Kevin Foley thing, where he sat back as the spare man in the D, mm. but for the tip puck outs, he went out to left wing yeah, back. Yeah. And I, like, I wanted you to get into that, yeah, because I know yeah. that you probably yeah, would have spotted yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. And, yeah. and I would have spotted that. I would have even spotted that in, in the Kilkenny-Wexford league game. Mm. Of, of this year when it was the snow and it was a bad wind and, and I remember being down there that day and I said to him, what will Davey do with the breeze now? And next minute Foley goes to goes goes to wing back, Limo McGovern goes into the forward, or Ching went into the centre forward that day and they push but then they're able to filter Kevin Foley back and w one of the clips we showed was Kevin Foley filtering back where it allows Liam Ryan to go. Mm. You know and I think that's the evidence, I think they had nine scores just before half time and I'd written something about it on the Friday about total hurling and that's what it was and I, you know even even when Tip had the five forwards ironically when they when they had John McGrath sent off Barry Heffernan and, and those guys started to go from the half back mm. you know and I think that's I think there's no argument about that but it's 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 I suppose struggling with the, the perception that you're some sort of guru or something it's, it's, it's complete bullshit now if you want me to be honest there's no it's just you love hurling and, and you're, you want to look at it as to what's happening in in dressing rooms I was I was unlucky enough not to be in I only played two championship matches with Waterford in 96 and 98. I played in my club then for 20 odd years at senior hurling. So you're in dressing rooms. And what I would say is, you're right, you get yourself fit or whatever, which was a struggle for me all my life. But, <laughs> but uh, the next thing fellas say is, how are we going to play? Like, what way are we going about it? Like, and how do we do it? Like? Do you know, and I think for me, sometimes that's not often portrayed. Like, it's actually just a simple game. You know what I mean? Even Cody said recently, after when I was asking him about the Limerick. You know, how do you deal with those Limerick wing forwards because they go into their own half and they've mm. 12 in their own half and he mm. said tactics are everywhere so like mm. that if Cody has finally said it because he is you know the don of hurling well, that should be the end of the conversation but, uh, exactly and two things two things from the start of the year I remember TJ Reid commenting on Henry after they won the all Ireland club fine and he said he's a modern manager we were encouraged to keep the ball that's the quote mm. we're encouraged to keep the ball we're encouraged to use it when the space opened up we'd, we'd go along and Sheedy at the start of the year and I remember writing about it in the Times, and on, on the 26th of January, it was the first round of the league, and I remember writing about it, not that, I'm, not that I can remember the dates, but, uh, <laughs> and Sheedy said, the day of 1-15 to 15 conventional is gone. You know, you need to be tactically aware. He actually wrote, he said that, like, openly, you know, and that first night, actually, against Clare in the league, they went with seven at the back, if you remember, they kind of yeah. went with seven, because Clare were withdrawn, you could argue that Clare were withdrawn, so Paddy Man was free. So, I think it's, an ar like, it's, it's a worn-out argument, now, really, and I'm, I'm, I've made it. <laughs> I made a conscious decision kind of say to myself right get this out of the way now today and then just trust my instincts in terms of what's happening I'm going to show it and I'm going to stand over it you know? so if you look at the the way punditry is going it's probably more like other sports where it's professional and I suppose the pundits are never going to be necessarily accountable to the players they won't mm. they won't they live in different kind of worlds I suppose but if you look at what's happening in GA and how that's been reflected there for Austin Gleeson this year mm. thing He's not having his greatest season mm. and a half, we'll say. Mm. He was unbelievable in, in 2016 and got mm. all the The way that he was kind of zeroed in on after that Limerick game and they showed him not tracking back, it was Don Logan, Henry Shefflin. Mm. Would you be a bit uncomfortable, you know, when you think about like players and what they have to deal with in their lives and they're not professional and all that kind of stuff, that there would be that level of scrutiny on a single player, especially someone you know so well? I would be uncomfortable, with it. yeah, 100%. And I'm uncomfortable too because ultimately, you might share ideologies in terms of how the game is played, but I wouldn't agree with that approach. Mm. You know, and not just because I know Austin or I know, but I know inter-county setups, and I know when a, when a team is struggling, how things can be perceived and how things look as opposed to how they, they really are, if you like. And I think we need to be very, very careful just around the, the, the struggles of players uh, mentally, physically, emotionally, psychologically. And I know the counter-argument, hey, if they're not tough enough to hear a bit of direct feedback they shouldn't be there in the first place that, that whole life it, into it. but they, they invest everything they have into it mm. they invest everything they have into it the whole mindset and in the culture now around around mental health and there, there is there is a, an issue with, with regards to symptomatic depression based on hurling mm. based on hey my form is terrible my whole life is 
is dictated by how I'm going and hurling. Yeah. And I don't think people actually realise, you know, I, I, I remember not making it at senior, having been three years minor and saying, geez, I'm not going to make it. Like. And I, don't, I, I wouldn't call it a, a depression where it's acute depression where you need a medication or you need counselling, but I call it a kind of a, a, not a warped mind, but a mind where you kind of say to yourself, Jesus, you know what, it's affecting me, like, you know, mm -hmm. it's affecting yeah. you. And I think what people don't realise at times is it does affect people. You know, form dips, you know, um, weight gain, uh, you know, uh, things like, you know, feedback, constructive feedback, relationships. With, so sometimes you have players arriving to, 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 to a match, having spent all day in college, broken up with the girlfriend that day. Come, and I think that's the, the job of the manager has become, become more difficult in that regards in terms of all the different, you know, facets of how you prepare and what you have to do. So I think it's... Um, that, that for me is the, is, is the interesting uh, aspect of it. So honing in on any individual, I'm not far. You know, I, I remember even that same day about, you know, players should be ashamed to go to work and all that kind of stuff. You know, is that not the very, you know, you know counter argument to, to what the GA represents, what we espouse about the traditional voluntary aspect of it, you know, that you turn into work. I remember, you know, being in school this year for the first year, you know, since I, since I you know, I was in school in, 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 in May, like, and Kevin had been on the Monday morning, Kevin Moore. And he'd be shot down like by, by what's after happening on the Sunday, like completely distraught. But by Jesus, he carried himself in school, you know, and went around with his daily. And no better young lads, no better than young lads, now to tell you, sorry, you were, what happened yesterday, you were useless yesterday, because that's part of the reason I got out of it well, the time, for, for the time I was there, because the young lads, but I, you know, for me, to, for, to, for some people to be kind of saying that you, should, you shouldn't be able to go to school, you should hang your head in, school, in shame in, school, in, in work the next day, and you, you find it hard. I don't think that's, I think that's the very opposite of, 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 you're going out in a voluntary capacity, you're giving it all, even though it doesn't look like it. You know, this downing tools mm -hmm. attitude, it doesn't really happen, it's just, you're, you're just completely psychologically on the floor, and I think that's what it looks like, you know. And then in terms of picking up tools, will you be picking them up for 2020? The Cork job is there, the Watford ah. job is there. <laughs> no, I, 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 I've been asked about it now, and I, I um, as I said, I was on holidays after, for the last two weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, I got Which a text. You can see, what a oh time. yeah, yeah, what a bronze stage! Yeah, geez, <laughs> full, full of, full of steak and chips for fourteen nights. That's I'm busting out of this bloody t-shirt. But anyway, <laughs> any bit away, I lost out the years. Freaking, I'm struggling now with the extra girl and t-shirt. I'll be straight up. But um, yeah, look, I got a text on the Thursday uh, to say Paul got stepped down, and um, and then I just said to Sarah, like, my wife, would just said, look, I'd be mad to be interested. And she said, you'd be off your head. This was the first conversation. And since that then I've just had conversations in my own head with nobody else just saying A, is it too soon, you know, to go back, you know, and B, um, there's good people in Waterford that are interested in it, you know, and would be very good at it as well, that are, that are very, you know, very, very capable and very interested. And you've no divine right either. You've absolutely no divine right in terms of, you know, in, being interested in it. And I think as a committee established in... Um, or they're setting up a committee and they'll probably interview people that they think are interested in or might be capable of doing the job. So that'll be interesting. So I'm, I'm in between. I'm probably saying to myself, in my own head, I was saying my own boy, for, oldest boy started the first year last year. And I kind of had a plan in my own head that, and now I'm bloody saying it here, but I was saying to myself, I, you know, give him, get him to junior search, you know, and then maybe have another cut at it then if he's, and the, the youngest boy being in third class then at that stage, maybe have another cut at, at a job then of that significance. But I do miss it. There's elements of me that kind of say, you know, a couple of lads, a guy involved in the backroom team with me, Fergal O'Brien, does the strength and conditioning, great man. He texts me this morning saying, Jesus, I was watching the game last night, it was on RT, I think, and he said, you get goosebumps, there was elements in the 2017 final. And I was kind of saying to myself, is he kind of, kind of saying, trying to get me, you know, probe me, you know, as regards interest? And I said, I actually rang him then, and I kind of said, Jesus, it was a good, you know, and blah, blah, blah. And he said, ah, oh, Mac, it was, it, was, it was unreal just watching it, you know, you need to get back on that line. And I said, look, I felt like I said, I don't, I don't know how I feel about it, you know, at this stage, you know, so, so that's where I'm at with it. And that's been completely, you know, upfront about it, you know, in terms of uh, getting back on the line. You have to have all your wits about you, all your energies about you. But look, getting on the plane the Monday morning after the Sunday game on Sunday night, I said, I wonder, would it be better on the line, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, just think, I just think, like, Austin Gleeson hitting peak age, the man he's peak age, or, you know, just at the, yeah. still at the right point. And I'm like, mm. if you wait too much longer, is this generation's chance going to pass? That's a distinct possibility. Mm, yeah. Distinct possibility, yeah, distinct possibility. You're a hurling nerd, as, as I've said to you before. <laughs> when you, so Kilkenny and Tip, they're playing the All-Ireland final this Sunday. What comes to mind when you think of 2016? For example, where did TJ Reid play that day? 
What did, did he play full forward? No, he played midfield. He played midfield. And oh, I now I tell you, he played 2016. I'll tell you, you're right. Because I was sitting at home before the All Ireland semi final replay, and I got a text. This will tell you now things are supposedly in house in Kilkenny. But I got a text at half nine on the Friday night before we played the replay. We were playing them on a Saturday in Hurlis with the Kilkenny team, and that there was going to be changes, that Liam Blanchfield was coming into it, that Mark Bergen was coming into it, and the midfield was going to be TJ Reid and Richie Hogan, and Michael Fenley was going to lie in on Tighe at centre forward and everything materialised. And I remember Brian went out to Marty Morrissey before and any changes, no changes, no changes. So the team was named differently. Was, so that, that, was that 15? No, six, that, no six, that, that was 16. They beat us in a replay. Beat us in a replay oh, in Turles. Yeah, 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 beat yeah. us in a replay yeah. in Turles. So TJ was midfield that day. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. And, yeah, I lost my train of thought there. But yeah. And then oh, Finley yeah. did his uh, Achilles against G in the replay That's right, Turles, yeah. So TJ stayed in midfield yeah, for the yeah, final. Yeah. So like, the, the teams have changed an awful lot since then. You know, you've... I think that Kilkenny team has improved massively yeah. since then. Yeah. Uh, James Callan that day scored nine points. They'll obviously be looking to target him, won't they? Yeah, the interesting one for me, I remember reading a James Barry interview after that final, and he said something about, um, we noticed Kilkenny against Waterford that they left a big space between their half-back line and full-back line early on. Mm. I remember Jake got a great goal, Jake Dillon got a great goal, and Austin got a great goal, and he was, he, he was right. It was almost like they honed in on trying to withdraw the space. So if you're in the Kilkenny camp this week, your Paul Murphy and Joey Holden are now two of the three that were still there. Yeah. You know? So you're kind of saying to yourself, the learnings that have come from since the Wexford Leinster final, where, where Fogarty sat back, where Porrig Welsh sat back, where Walter Welsh kind of double teamed as nearly an extra wing back, wing forward, are, are going to be more evident than ever. Like if you're, if you're, if you're in addressing Holden and Murphy at the, the week, you're going to say, you're going to be saying to Conor Fogarty, don't store further than 20 yards here. You're going to be saying to Porrig Welsh, you're going to be saying to Paddy Deegan. So, so for me, it'll be. Directly, what happened against Limerick in that Garoad Hegarty, mm. Hayes, and Morrissey will be the property of John Donnelly, uh, Walter Welsh, and TJ Reid, if you like, you know, and if that's the 10, 11, and 12, they go it. And it'll become just an absolute war zone out there. That's what I see happening. Now, they'll go so far, I think, they, you know, they, mm. they'll go so far and they'll, they'll hand over. And, um, and the other interesting one for me is will Brendan Maher, will he pick TJ, or won't he? Or, do you know what, that's, that's, for me, you know, he's picked, he's picked Galan, he's picked Austin Gleeson, he's picked Tony Kelly. Do you know, did he, did he, who did he pick against Wexford? I can't, did he, you know, or was he just told to hurl against Wexford? Against Wexford, Wexford was Rory O'Connor. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah. of course, Barry Heflin came in, did a great job on Lee yeah. Chin, and Seamus Kennedy came in and did a great job on Jack O'Connor. So Tip brought in six foot two and six foot four athletes, and it, it changed the dynamic of that Tip team. And they did, and Shane, the interesting thing there now is, they did that on the strength of knowing that they'd have an extra defender as well, mm. you know, so will the tack change now because, and then are you back to Michael Ryan's trialling of Seamus Kennedy at fullback last year in the first couple of matches, you know, who will pick Fenley? You, you know, imagine you know? it's going to be matchups. Yeah, 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 you know, like, you know, so, you know so, so, so if he goes wherever, he'll, he'll go with him or whatever, you know, will Carl Mart be detailed for Richie Hogan, you know, I think it's, that, that's the fascinating thing for me. Similarly, if TJ is picked by Brendan Maher, does he go in full forward at the start then? Does he bring Brendan Maher to full back? So, these are the things that are kind of running around in my head in, in the run-up to it, but um, I don't think it'll be as straight-laced as people think, you know, conventional as people think, because mm. it's two traditions. I think it'll be, I think Paul Igmar, if say if Paul Igmar doesn't go at centre-back and he goes with Walter Walsh, I think he'll say to himself, I'll hang back off the wing here and I'll concede two or three points to Walter Walsh, um, but I'll, I'll be near Fenley and I'll be, I'll be the kind of cheat sweeper, I heard him Chris Morris calling it, he wrote about it from, from wing back if you like, as yeah. opposed to, you know, from centre back. I think Tip will play with two inside in a three man midfield, mm. Dan McCormick yeah. to go in with yeah. midfield. How, who do you think will win? I think Tip will win. Yeah? Yeah, I think Tip will win. I think they'll find a way, I think, I think they've an edge motivation as well. I think deep down, there's a kind of um, a thing that Sheedy can twist in that, you know, not, 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 not Jackie Tyrrell's comments in his book, but just deep down, I think there's a, there's a feeling in Kilkenny that if they get that tip in their faces, that they'll crumble. The tip and I think, don't have the manliness. And, and any manage, management word or salt will twist that. Like, yeah. We'll absolutely err on the side of kind of saying, hey, they can question everything about us, but they're actually questioning here now what we're about as men and individuals and, and, and as a team. And I think, I, think Kilkenny, I think Tip will come with a ferocity. I think Kilkenny will obviously meet him with that ferocity. But I, I, I agree with, I, I heard Owen Kelly saying yesterday, I think Tip will find a way at some stage to get in. And then just finally, the, the minor final is on this Sunday as well, and with Electric Ireland, you're going to be getting the, the championship haircut beforehand. I'm not sure what, what they're going to do with you. The full fade, the full fade. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you obviously played minor with Warford for three years yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah. How much do you look forward to these, these finals, and how good is it to play in them? Yeah, well, I, I actually played in the 92 final, and Michal O'Donoghue was playing with Galway, I remember that. Mm. So 
great memories of it. Times have changed, obviously. I was 10 stone, I had a full, full head of blondie here. <laughs> so, yeah, look, it's a massive day in the lives of the young lads. Particular significance this year for us in school, in that the captain of Kilkenny Miners is actually in our school, right. James Aylward. So, I'm shouting for Kilkenny in the minor. You know, it would be great for our school if, if, um, if James could get up the steps of the Hogan stand and, and, and lift the cup. So, yeah, I've seen I've, I've saw all Waterford's minor matches. I saw the, the Kilkenny Galway or the Kilkenny Galway match and I saw the Limerick. Uh, Limerick were actually my pick, I thought to myself, to Limerick, Carl O'Neill, I was watching Carl O'Neill, yeah, brilliant player. Relied too much on him. Yeah, a little, little, little bit over reliant on him, but um, typical Kilkenny in that, you know, I, I think I've said previously, five of the last six All-Ireland Colleges and next week this team just, I think it's Richie Mulroney's fifth time having a team in an All-Ireland Final, um, himself and Adrian Fine, and so look, look, looking at Billy Drennan, looking at James Aylward himself, uh, looking at young Clifford, uh, they have a lot of strength, but ultimately I think the Galway have been racking up scores. I think Ian McKillen's, you know, the fact that the, the, this, this, uh, this suspension has been overturned, if you think. I think the, there's a slight edge with Galway, even though 